Divination with the mirror is an ancient practice known as scrying. The term originates from the word descry, meaning to catch sight of. Scrying is also known by various other names, such as seeing or peeping, which is a practice of looking into a certain medium in the hope of detecting significant messages or visions. The following story is about an old wardrobe that had been in the same family for many years. At first, it amused its owners, but would later give them disturbing visions. When Tim Kovina's grandmother died, he and his wife Judy inherited the old wardrobe that stood 250 centimetres high and 180 centimetres wide. It was made from a heavy wood and was put together with expert carpentry that fascinated everyone that set eyes on it. It had been given to his grandma as a wedding present and was over a hundred years old and was made sometime in the early 19th century. The wardrobe was installed in the second bedroom of their house and it was in this room that his wife Judy began to experience some bizarre happenings. One morning around 6am their son had awoken crying so Judy lifted him out of his crib but as she was lifting him something caught her eye and it was coming from the wardrobe. At first, she thought it may have been a reflection coming from the mirror and turned her head to look at the mirror. It turned out to be the strangest reflection she'd ever seen, where the whole surface of the mirror was shimmering with different colours and intensities of light that swirled around. She looked around the room to see what could have been causing this unusual effect, but could see nothing. The wardrobe itself was standing in the shade and there was no light that could have come from the window and she could find no item in the room that could have reflected into the mirror causing the colours to swirl. She just scratched her head and took the baby downstairs. Later that day when she had a spare moment she went back upstairs to look at the wardrobe because it had so intrigued her. She walked up to the mirror expecting to find another beautiful light display but all she saw was her own reflection. She continued to stand in front of the mirror expecting something to happen but there was no other reflection except her own. Weeks passed without any further incident until late one morning when Judy walked into the room. She had mostly forgotten about the strange events and was busy vacuuming when all of a sudden she glanced across at the mirror and noticed it glimmering faintly. She had not yet opened the curtain so there was no chance that the light was coming from inside. As she studied it closely, she found that the light appeared to be coming from deep inside the mirror rather than an outside reflection. Then through the maze of multicolored light, she could see another image which gradually became clearer. And all of a sudden, she found herself looking at the image of an old woman. The old woman was wearing a white hat atop her hair that was pale yellow and she had a kind looking face with tired eyes that appeared to gaze out into the distance. Her whole image looked like a holographic portrait trapped inside the mirror. Draped over the woman's shoulders was a dark material and a high neck dress. As Judy was studying the old woman, her eyes slowly turned towards her and she was now looking directly at Judy. This unnerved Judy so much that she ran out of the room. It took about two hours to calm herself down. She decided to get out of the house and go to the local store in order to forget the terrifying incident. When she eventually returned home, her husband could clearly see that she was still traumatised by the incident and decided to go upstairs to see for himself. When he entered the room, he looked at the mirror but found nothing unusual or strange. When Tim's parents paid them a visit, he told them what had been happening with the wardrobe and his mother looked at them with an expression that she knew exactly what Judy had experienced. His mother then validated everything Judy had experienced by telling a story of her own. She said that she was about 10 years old when she first noticed something strange about the wardrobe and after Judy's story, her memories of what she experienced as a child came flooding back. The wardrobe had always stood in her older brother Wayne's bedroom. She said that she was extremely close to her brother and one day he asked her to fetch his jacket from the bedroom as they were about to go for a walk in the park. She then entered his room and as she was taking his jacket from the wardrobe and was about to close the door, she looked in the mirror and could see a shimmering light. The light that Tim's mother had described was identical to what Judy had experienced. But as she looked more closely, she could see a young girl walking down the street. The young girl then stopped to talk to an elderly couple who were gardening. 
The street was familiar to her, as it was the one she lived on until she got married, and she knew the old couple, whom she'd frequently passed, and the little girl was herself. She realised that the images the mirror was showing was repeating an event that had happened five years previously. It was as if it had been captured on film and was being shown at that exact moment. The images not only fascinated the young girl, but she was also amazed at the vivid colours. The whole family looked both shocked and frightened at her story. Apparently, what Tim's mother had described was the first of many similar visions that were shown to her in the mirror. Tim's mother said that when she mentioned the incident to her brother Wayne, she found that he too had seen many visions and said that he'd also witnessed some ghostly visitors at night who appeared to preen themselves in front of the mirror. Over the years, she said that she and her brother would share many mysterious stories about the mirror. Even though she had grown up with the mirror and seen many strange things, she could offer no explanation for the strange phenomena. When Wayne joined the army, she would sit for hours just staring into the mirror, waiting for the next vision to appear. It helped to distract her from the horror of war, if only for a short while. One day when she was cleaning her brother's room, the mirror started to glimmer. So she stopped what she was doing to see what the mirror would reveal. A coloured haze slowly cleared and she was suddenly confronted with a battle scene where people in uniform were running amongst smoke and enemy fire. She could see they were American soldiers by their uniforms. All of a sudden she saw a familiar face that was her brother Wayne who was running with the other troops. She could see tanks firing as if charging at the enemy. In the battle, she had lost sight of her brother and tried to locate him amongst the smoke. As the smoke cleared, she could see that her brother was wounded and was staggering forward with his gun trailing on the ground. Then he fell down and laid still. It was at this moment she realised that he was dead. Up to this point, the visions were pleasant and entertaining, but she was now in shock after witnessing the death of her brother. She wanted to believe that the mirror had got it wrong and her brother was still alive but the mirror never lied and had always portrayed true images. Unfortunately, two months later, her parents had received news that her brother had been killed in action. The young girl now felt resentful towards the mirror and the horror it had shown her. It was the last time she went near the mirror and over the years had done her best to put it out of her mind. That is until Judy had described what she had seen and realised that the wardrobe mirror was still very active. What her mother-in-law had told her filled Judy with horror and felt that she no longer wanted the wardrobe around the house. 